Greetings folks, I've just finished a print here on the ANET ET5X and uh, so I'll just bring that forward, Y I've been printing with it for about a week uh, and it's printing very nicely now but I have had some frustration so I'll talk about that in this video this is a little uh, gluing clamp that I've designed and made up and just put a rubber band around there for, for gluing uh, model planes together that's working very nicely there's a little skirt that's sticking well the problem I had uh, was getting the Z home position or the Z zero position the Z axis that's sort of up and down uh, to consistently give me the right height above the bed so that the first layer sticks nicely to the bed and the, of course from the first layer everything else uh, builds up on top of that. The print quality is very good, it's working quite well indeed uh, and the touch screen is working well. It is the uh, non-open source firmware uh, which is much better than the previous ET4 I'm finding. Uh, it has been, been improved the only frustration I've really had is getting the Z sensor, the Z home position to be consistent. So let's go over to the desk and talk about it. First print came from the supplied SD card, that's the little dog there that printed quite nicely. A bit of a knob on his head uh, using the, the one kilo uh, of black PLA that comes with the printer. At the moment I'm using this variegated uh, PLA that they also sent me that sort of changes colour. Uh, they sent me a couple of spools of that to play with and I'm quite liking that actually, it's really nice filament. Some of the first things I did was uh, calibration cubes of various sizes and they are turning out to be quite accurate, maybe 0.5% uh, out, too small. Uh, but that is very, very minor. There's a 20 millimetre, there's a 40 millimetre, there's a 100 millimetre cube. They all worked very nicely. Next thing I did was something a bit higher. The thing is, uh, to do a full size print, it's always going to take you about 24 hours, so I haven't been game enough to do that yet. But here's a, a rocket, uh, which is about that high, and this one sort of came out, the infill showed through the walls there, and that is mainly due to the Cura profile. There is uh, an ET5X profile included with Cura, and I just used that as it was. Uh, to improve that sort of infill coming through, I changed the setting to print the uh, walls before the infill and that pr improved it quite nicely. Bit of a seam down the back there, but you can get rid of that with a random uh, line start, but that is quite nice. <laughs> Then a bit of a, a dimension check, uh, I printed this M30 bolt that I designed myself in Fusion 360 and that just works perfectly. That's showing that the X and Y and Z dimensions are all nicely calibrated. Here's the little gluing clamp, uh, you just put a rubber band around there uh, and an M3 bolt through there, uh, that's just to glue, help glue things together very useful in my hobby. I also printed this uh, level pattern that just checks that the level of the bed is actually uh, as good as it can be and that prints beautifully. Then I decided to get a little bit more adventurous and printed this Lord of the Rings, the one ring with the script around the outside and the inside. That came out really nicely. This is a three times uh, magnified version of it one bracelet to rule them all. Mm -hmm. 
Then I also printed this hand, which is Thing from the Adams family, and a few more smaller rings. Uh, there's Thing sitting there. Either sits that way or that way, and I thought that printed out beautifully. Very, very impressive. There's a bit of a line going down there and some bobbly stuff there, but uh, the rest of it, the rest of the detail is nice and smooth and uh, very impressive. More versions of the one ring there. And the script also still shows up. Very impressive. And the latest one I did was this little uh, red dwarf star bug that was printed in three or four different parts and then you glue them together. Came out a little bit rough and things keep breaking off but uh, that's more the design than the print I think. Um, so there's star bug. So I'm impressed with the print quality. Once you get that Z level working consistently it works really nicely. So I'll go a bit closer and show you more about the sensor uh, and we can talk about what's needed to get printing consistently. Uh, basically I found the video by Dr. Vax, D-R-V-A-X, I think his name is Irv Shapiro, he does fantastic 3D printer uh, videos. He goes through the, the process of setting up the levelling, the gantry, uh, setting up the sensor distance and all that stuff in great detail and I would strongly advise you to follow his instructions to the letter. That's what um, made the difference for me. Only today I've got it printing nice and consistently. I'd set up the level, adjust it, get it printing okay on one day, then the next day I'd come back and it would, I'd have to do it all again because it just wasn't, wasn't coming down to the right level. It was printing like three or four millimetres above the bed. Okay, so with a lot of other printers, you have these sorts of end switches here to s determine where the zero positions are. There's the X position there, Y position is down the back there, and on other prints printers, you'll have uh, another switch down here or up on the top, like on the ET4, which will stop the motor, tell it where the zero position with is. This one's a little bit different. It has uh, an electronic sensor here, this thing here, and so you can see it underneath. And that senses the distance of the head to the print surface. And you have to set up that uh, mechanically and electronically to get it working correctly. The whole sensor can move up and down, uh, and there's a, a little uh, hex bolt in there that you can undo and physically move the sensor up and down. And the first step, as uh, Dr. Vax demonstrates, is to get the sensor uh, two or three millimetres above the bed when the nozzle is just touching. And then you can also uh, adjust the screw on the top that electronically fine adjusts that distance, the distance that it detects. So it's a combination of getting those two correct. And the thing you have to do before all of that is to get the gantry absolutely level so that it's moving up and down absolutely uh, parallel to the print surface. Then you do mechanical bed levelling using the, the screws in the usual way. Then you can also do an automatic uh, bed level, uh, which works very well, but takes sort of, well, I don't know, six, seven minutes or something like that. But as I said, once all of that is sorted out, uh, it prints very nicely indeed and uh, it is good value for money for a large size printer. I think I would still prefer to have a mechanical end switch for the Z level. Uh, it just makes it easier I think to mechanically level it. It can be fiddly and take a lot of extra work to get the electronic sensor working properly. But anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching.